All right, so Tyler. So a lot of people don't know that you actually started shooting videos first, right? That's correct. Before yeah. you were a yeah. before you were a photographer. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I started out when I was a kid, I made skate videos and then from there it went into music videos and my kind of dream when I was a kid was to make movies. But I was very poor and I had no access to obviously make a movie. So while making videos, I realized that if I wanted to show people kind of how I wanted the videos to look, the most cost-effective way was to take pictures. And so I would take pictures like, this is what I want my movie to look like, or this is what I want the video to look like. And then I realized that I had such a freedom with photography that I could just literally dream up any movie. You know, most, most directors, I mean, you look at Tarantino, he's made nine movies in his career. Um, obviously people like Spielberg, etc. have made more, but a lot of these guys don't make a lot of movies. I can make a photograph every single day and it can be a completely different story and a completely different movie. Wow. Okay, so you shoot entirely in film. Yep. And you were really one of the first to start doing that. I know there's a, a resurgence in using film right. among young photographers, but tell us how you, why you chose that medium. Well. When I first started, I got a film camera and I could only afford to do about three pictures per shoot. So I would have, you know, I had a 35 millimeter, so I'd have about 36 frames. So each shoot I did, I would do only three pictures. So I would get 12 shoots out of one roll of film because I couldn't afford, you know, any other way. And that taught me something really interesting, which is really making it count when I take a picture. Cut to, I got a digital camera and like the beginning and the height of the digital, and then I was able to freely experiment. But then as I started doing prints and the prints got bigger and bigger, and then I started doing different types of printing, I wasn't getting the look and the feel that I wanted out of the digital. Um, you know, I think digital is great. It serves a great purpose. Uh, a lot of people love it, but I wanted to have something that had a different feeling and the film to me has more of a soul. Whereas the digital, and by the way, it is very hard to use and it's expensive and it takes time and I use a, you know, I use a 40 year old film camera. One of my cameras is 62 years old. Um, so it's not easy. You know, it doesn't, the, those cameras don't do any of the work for you. You have to do everything, which is also part of the fun. Um, and I just, I just fell in love with the soul that the pictures had when they were printed. And then I, I remember I had this gallery and we had, I'd probably say half the gallery was digital and half was film and all the film photos sold. And I was like, well, the proof's in the pudding. You know, if, if people can tell, and I didn't say this is digital and this is film, it just, there was something inherent about the soul of the picture that I just, loved and collectors loved and it just made me keep going and now when I think of pictures I think of I want to use this camera to create this picture so it's like if I want a square Hasselblad and I want that square look and I want the border then I know exactly how to do just that look wow so talking about the soul that you get yeah. with, with film what about the subject matter? How do you come up with these amazing vignettes and subjects that you do? So I have a list in my phone that's probably, you just keep scrolling, right? And it's just ideas. And some of, you know, some ideas I've had for 10 years that I haven't done yet. Some ideas I had last week that I've already done. Um, I will be driving down the street and I'll see an old car and I'll be like, oh, what if I had a, a woman with her leg on the hood in latex, and then people leaning out of the hood looking at her, and it almost looks like she's an alien. Um, I was at Hearst Castle. Uh, Lydia Hearst is a, one of my best friends, and I was at Hearst Castle, and I saw this room. They let us like go and shoot in the castle. I see this room, and I'm like, I gotta build a set like this, but I don't wanna do it the Hearst Castle vibe, I wanna do Marie Antoinette vibe. So then I end up building a whole Versailles room at my old house and it was just like okay now we're doing this series and we're gonna get the wigs 
And then we're gonna, oh, you know what? I've never done a series on eight by 10 before. Let's just do that. So we'll just see if, how that works. So then I ended up shooting my first series on the eight by 10 camera after we built the set and custom wigs and dresses and the whole thing. So it's, it's funny because I a lot of the times I think people expect me to have this thing where it's like, oh, I planned this for a year and it was this crazy idea and blah, blah, blah. But literally with that, I was, I was at Hearst Castle. I saw a room that I loved. I said, I've got to do something on this scale. Two weeks later, I was doing the shoot. So, you know, it's, it's, for me, it's about just execution. If you have the idea, obviously not every idea you can just do a week later. Like when we blew up the Rolls Royce, that took probably six months of planning, maybe more. Um, but in terms of how fast we did it, I mean, we did it pretty quick. I had to find the car and then, you know, we had to figure out who could blow it up and then how to do it safely and, you know, alert the police and tell everybody we're going to blow up a car today and all that stuff. So I just, I have, I cannot stop having ideas. I just don't have enough time to do them all. Yeah, that's amazing. So as far as your choice, technically, of which camera to use, the yeah. Hasselblad or the 8x10, how does that figure into it? So there's some weird thing about each one of the cameras that has like a weird calling, right? So there'll be certain photos where I will just be like, this photograph has to be on the 8x10. And uh, I think, you know, you remember the butterfly picture that we have in your gallery. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking about the butterfly picture and I could not think about doing it with any other camera. I was like, this has to be on the 8x10. Now, unfortunately for me, that photograph was incredibly difficult to make. It took four hours to do, and we took four pictures. And the whole, because you know, they have to have their heads propped up like this, and then they're balancing a dead butterfly in their mouth. So if you think about it, you breathe just the tiniest bit, it would fall out. But with an eight by 10, you can't see what you're taking a picture of. So we would get it framed, I would put them in, and then if they moved that much, I would reset the whole thing. And so it was just this weird dance, and then finally they got like this, and then they were able to, I had to teach them how to hold their breath. So they're holding their breath for 50 or 60 seconds with their necks up in a weird position. Um, but the result is unlike anything you've ever seen. And I don't think that that would have worked as well if I'd done any of the other cameras. It would have been much easier but it might not have worked as well. Yeah, that makes total sense. Well, so when you use the 8x10, because I, I love yeah, hearing yeah. about that because, man, that's that's really going back yeah. to the origins. Oh, yeah. You gotta have guts, man. You gotta be committed. Oh yeah, and the 8x10 we call the great equalizer, right? So mm -hmm. it is not for the faint of heart. You know, you have to really 100% dive in. When we did the butterfly shot, the camera was extended, I think it was 48, I think it was 48 or 56 inches. That's how long the bellows had gone out. So then it went all the way into that. So we had to have two tripods, then we had to do the math on each foot per exposure compensation for how far it was. And we couldn't find any chart for that, so we had to go by the, the feet, and then we broke it down by millimeters of inches versus the optical, you know, the, the way the lens we were using versus how far it was, and then the film we were using, and the film we were using only had a latitude of a quarter to a half of a stop. So if we were over or under by a half a stop of light, then it would have been no good. Wow, not for the faint of heart. Not for the faint of heart. Then you go to the next step, which is, the cameras are really hard to get. They're gigantic. I mean, the camera was probably a total of 50 or 60 inches long when we were doing it. And then you think about the film cost, which is, I think it's 30 or $40 per sheet of film, mm -hmm. just for the sheet of film. Uh, and then, you know, it's another $10 to develop each sheet. Mm -hmm. So you're at almost $50 every time you press the button. Then you have to spend a couple hundred dollars to scan it. So, you know, you're looking at if you shoot 10 photos, that's $500 plus 
you know, if you scan one or two of them, you're at a thousand dollars per photo. Yeah, before you even know. That's what without, doing. you know, the butterfly, the lights, the studio, anything like that. That's literally just on taking the picture. Wow. Um, so, but I love the 8x10. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just, it's crazy. And when you bring that thing out to shoot somebody, they are like, what is this thing? Yeah. So, and obviously the results. What's sad to me is that to really see the results from the 8x10, you have to see a print of it. It's, it's not done justice in this video. It's not done justice on, on Instagram or the phone or anything like that. And you know, you've seen them yeah, in person. Yeah, they're absolutely, they're stunning. There's just yeah. something about them that really, you can't put into words, but you right. feel it on a visceral level. That's right. So, okay, tell us what's your next thing? What are you thinking now? What are you gonna do next? So I'm working on a series now uh, that I've only shown a couple of people, you being one of them. Mm -hmm. And it is an entire series of silhouettes. Um, which I had been thinking about for some time and I just have started the process of doing it. Um, I think as we've been talking, I'd love to see it be an entire show. I'd love to do a whole book of it. Um, it's something very different for me that I've never done before. And it's an interesting series because this series I spent about a month just researching and testing. Um, Whereas, you know, I haven't had to do that for a long time because, you know, I know how to do most of the things that I'm doing now. It's like, yeah. oh, you know, if we're going to blow something up, I'm like, oh, I know exactly how to do that. Or, you know, <laughs> we set something on fire. I'm like, oh, yeah, easy. Yeah. Um, but with this, I tested it for a while to get the exact look and tone that I wanted. And, you know, you and I were talking about this, but even from the first test shot that I showed you yeah. the, of the flower to now seeing some of the series, yeah. I mean, it's, it's leaps and bounds in, in difference. And um, I just really enjoy making them. They're, they're very hard to make. You have to be very meticulous, but it's a lot of fun. Wow, I'll tell you what, I mean, just from what I saw, yeah. I've never seen anything like this. And it's gonna be exciting to yeah. see how you expand on it. Right. And, and the book and everything. Well, yeah. man, it's it's an honor to be here with you. Thank um, you. It, you're you're one of our generation's most important artists, photographer, and it's a pleasure to be here talking to you about. Thank it. you. And just for anybody that doesn't know, the person interviewing me is one of my absolute favorite painters ever, J. D. Miller. Uh, probably the nicest guy you could ever meet. Go check him out. Um, and uh, he just happened to be here and I was shooting a portrait of him just a minute ago and I asked him if he would interview me for this and yeah. thank you for, and for doing it. No extra charge. That okay, so one of the things that I think people really love is you've got kind of a twisted, you've got a twisted mind. Me? Yes, oh. you do. <laughs> uh, you've been called eccentric, weird, um, insane, but really, to me, that's what makes a difference. Anybody can pick up a camera. Right. So, man, what inspires you to do some of this crazy stuff you've done? So when I was a kid and we would make the skate videos, I remember they sent me a video camera one day and they said, film skating, but then also just film whatever. And we took the filming whatever to a whole other level. Like it was just crazy. Yeah. You know, we were like, oh, let's drive a golf cart off a pier and you know, or wh whatever we did, right? I was like, oh, let me see if I can backflip this motorcycle into a lake or, you know, we, we did crazy really? stuff. Really? Oh yeah. Um, so we would do all kinds of crazy stuff. And that, a lot of that carried over into my photography where, you know, like when I did the suspense series, I was like, I called up my, a lot of my friends that I skated with and I said, let's uh, jump off buildings, let's <laughs> jump off trains, you know, let's throw Emma Roberts through the air or have Lydia Hurst flying, you know, naked. And, and then I did my self-portrait, which is one of my favorite pictures. Mine too, by picture. the way. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Amazing. And photograph. so, you know, I did the big backflip over the train tracks and that was uh, a whole thing. And I, you know, part of that is I wanted to remember when I'm very old that I could do that hmm. and um, that's why I wanted to do that that backflip and originally with suspense it was going to be an entire self-portrait series ah. so when we went out to do the first shoot 
um, I had to have somebody, I was standing on a ladder, so I was on top of a ladder and it was balancing in the street, right? So they, uh, they drove off, I was on a car, they drove off and I balanced on the ladder and then I rode the ladder to the ground and so there's a way you can do it where you ride it and then you roll out of it and it's an old wooden ladder. So obviously I have somebody who's taking, who's hitting the release of the shutter. First time I get up there, I ride the ladder down, I get about right here to the ground and I hear the shutter go off. Oh. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So we reset, I get back on the ladder, I go again, I'm right here. Now the, the ideal shot is me here. Okay. So I'm right here, car drives away, shutter goes off. <laughs> I ride it down. I'm like, this is not gonna work. <laughs> They're like, don't worry, we got it. Go one more time. I get back up, I go again, I ride it all the way to the ground, I land on the ground, I roll off, shutter goes off. <laughs> I stand up, I'm in a full tuxedo. I stand up, I walk over, I go, series is done. You guys are going in, I'm shooting it. They're like, what? I go, oh yeah, it's over, I can't do it anymore. So I, I did my one, you know, I did my backflip and we managed to get that, but it, it changed the whole shape of the series because I would have just killed myself. Yeah, it was, and, but it was all going to be you originally, yeah, yeah. your self-portraits. Yeah. So what, originally the whole series was yeah. going to be self-portraits, but then I was like, all right, there's just going to be a picture of me dead on the ground <laughs> after whatever moment happened because I will have to do these things a hundred times. Um, so, you know, I just... I guess I just think very differently than most people in the sense of, you know, I'm, I grew up, you know, flying around in helicopters and airplanes and racing motocross and skating and doing all these things. So I don't have any fear. You know, I've broken bones and I've, mm -hmm. you know, I've done crazy stuff. And so the stuff we do now is nothing in comparison to the craziness we did when we were kids. Um, it's just, now it's documented and then it's in a gallery and then it's in someone's home. Whereas when we were kids, we had no camera. And I always have this quote, which is, if you remove the camera from my life, it's just insanity. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. So when we were younger, there wasn't really a camera. We would just do stuff. Um, and I don't know. I just, I just can only think the way that I think. Yeah, well, you, so then you really didn't have any choice. You just did crazy stuff. So now you're in Hollywood. Right. You're like in the center of the entertainment universe. You've got all these actresses and actors and, yeah. and prop people. I mean, has that allowed you to go to another level, oh, having yeah. all that access? Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing for me of why I really live here is because anything you want to do, you can do it. If I want... Marie Antoinette shoot, got it. I want to blow up a car, got it. I want to be in a swamp, got it. I want to be in the snow, you're, you're an hour away. You want to be at the beach. Anything you think of is within an hour of here. And there aren't many places like that. And the weather's pretty consistent year yeah. round. So I can have an idea anytime I want. And within a fair amount of time, it can be executed. Yeah, makes sense. Well, so, okay, so, you know, we all just went through this insane quarantine yeah. and the whole COVID thing. Tell us about your adventure going to the to the sand dunes right. next to the sea right. and what, what happened yeah. with that. Okay. So it's the, an amazing photograph. Thank you. So this is one of my photographs called Lioness, and it was, uh, we had all been under quarantine, and it was just when they had kind of, like, people were just starting to kind of be able to go out, right? And so we decided that we wanted to go out to this spot and I had a hunch. So this is just all on a guess. Right. So we drive three, four hours to this place. Now there's these amazing, incredible sand dunes. And I had been there before, but whenever you go, people have driven, you know, motorbikes or dune buggies or whatever on them. So you have all these tracks all over, right? Yep. Well, my thought was, Everyone's been quarantined. The whole thing, the wide vista will be pristine, right? Yeah. 
and also there won't be anybody there doing anything. So we called up Hannah, who was a dear friend of mine, and we said, all right, you're gonna meet us at this place. We'll keep, and it was weird because we, we kept all distant from each other. Yeah. But what a great way to do that in this giant location. You know, it's like I wasn't able to do a portrait session because mm -hmm. I'm going to be close. So we're in this in the middle of nowhere yeah. in this giant location. So we go out there and there was this one photo I was about to shoot. So I was waiting for Allie to come up to shoot it. And I see kind of off, off just a bit in the distance. So the main photo is here and then over here, I see just this little kind of, you know, sand dune. And I yell out to Hannah, strip down. <laughs> and she's like, okay. She strips down and I said, walk in a, and I'm like yelling. I'm like, walk in a straight line right up there. Now I'm so far away from her that, you know, I, I, I don't even know if she understands what I'm saying, but she perfectly walks up and you can see in the photo yeah. all the footsteps. Mm -hmm. And to me, that makes the photo. Amazing. Right? Yeah. So she walks up and she just walks. And then I said, stop. And so she just stopped. And, and it's this weird way of directing where it, you know, it's like you, you just, you don't ever really direct like that. Normally you tell somebody what you want and then they go and do it. So I'm yelling <laughs> and uh, she just stops and I go, in my mind, I'm like, what do I say to her right yeah, now? Yeah. Right? Because I know what I want her to do, but I, you have to simplify it. Because I have to be able to scream it mm -hmm. in like one little sentence. Yeah. So I just yelled, be a lion. Whole, you know, assuming she would understand what that meant. Whoop, she's down, pushes up, and she's like, just literally turns into a lion. Oh my God. And you know, as you've seen in the photo yeah. and as you're, you've probably seen the photo now, the clouds were just a godsend. Yeah. And so she just plops down, she's a lion. And I think, I think I took two frames, mm -hmm. maybe one, maybe two, mm -hmm. it was the end of a roll. I finished the roll and she's just there. Yeah. So she can't hear that I finished the roll or anything. Yeah. And I forget. Yeah. So I'm so like, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm yeah. like, oh, perfect. Let me change the film. So I'm changing the film yeah. and Allie goes, can she get up now? And I go, <laughs> oh, get up. Yeah. So she was just locked because I was locked in. Yeah. She was locked in. And so she gets up and, and then she kind of comes over and I'm like, that's going to be amazing. Yeah. And then I get the film back and then I, you know, I showed you the picture and yeah. it was just instantly you know it's now a very sought after picture and yeah the print is just beautiful it's beyond beautiful yeah. yeah and you know the thing is there's not a thing you've done that isn't really a masterwork but every artist has those rare moments yes. where it's like that one out of a hundred or one right. out of two hundred and man that one well i remember we everything. talked about it and uh you know i told you the story mm -hmm. and uh I remember thinking after, because you were just like, this is one of my favorites, I Ooh, love it. Yeah. And I remember thinking to myself, well, that's what happens when I'm kept inside for you know, <laughs> two or three months, well, however long it was. Yeah. And then finally I get to go outside. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, we gotta, let's go. And, and you know, I mean, it's like, we probably walked in that desert area that day, probably six to eight miles. We yeah. were just going all around, just trying to find and trying to chase those clouds. and. I mean, but everything, talk about a confluence of events. Yeah. Everything, I mean, and then you know how those those uh, dune buggies are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. Yes. And so to have that pristine right. landscape. Well, I don't know, you know, I hope in our lifetime that what happens never happens again. Yeah. So you never be able to get, not that so no one can take that photo, but yeah. I hope people are out there in those dune buggies, you know, driving around all they want because... Yeah. You know, it was, it was just this weird time that may never exist like that again. Let's hope not. Hopefully. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was such a special day. There have been multiple photos from that. They're just yeah. so powerful for me. Every one I've that seen. That whole day, yeah. Yeah, they're just... Yeah, I did Allie with the book. Mm -hmm. So it was crazy because... Fairy tale series. Allie, yeah, Allie with the book mm -hmm. and Hannah happened within... 
uh, three minutes of each other. Really? I mean, that's, yeah, because you could see the clouds have just moved like a tiny bit. So yeah. it was just like, because I was trying to get the clouds, but Allie had forgotten the book. So she ran back to get the book, and that's why I took the photo of Hannah. You're kidding. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. And, and it's one of those things, like, I am, I'm super weird in the thing of I always think everything's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So when she ran off to get the book, I could have just been like, yeah, yeah. Where's wait. The, you know, it's yeah. just wait. Mm -hmm. But as soon as she ran off to get the book, I watched her go, and I, that's when I saw the little dune, and I was like, lion right there. Yeah. And to, to Hannah's credit, yeah. she's like, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh they yeah. have such I'll never faith forget in it. You. She had on this, and you know, because it was so hot, and, it was so, and she had on this dress, and I said, strap down. And, she, <laughs> and then she's right in there. Yeah. Um, but you know, again, that's, that's another reason why I like to work with people so much, mm -hmm. because I now have a shorthand with Hannah where I really don't even have to speak to her. She knows what I want. Yeah. If that had been someone maybe I had never worked with and I yeah. go be a lion, they're going to be like, ah, or, you know, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know, they, they yeah. might not know. And she was just like, boom. And it is. Yeah. It's perfect. I can't wait for people to see it. Oh, I love that one. I know the response in our gallery has been off the hook. Awesome. They're stunned when they stand in front of it. And you have a 72. I have a 72. Oh, so yeah. you're there, man. Oh. You're, it's, and it's like, yeah, 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 it's really cool. That's awesome. Wow. Well, so it, you know, it's kind of cool. You're, you're doing this for scope. Yep. And, uh, that's kind of cool. So this will be in London. Yeah. So I believe this will play virtually. I think they're having a virtual booth. Ah, okay. So, so I think what it is, and you, sorry if you're watching this, but, uh, I believe that you'll be able to go into a booth and there'll be a, a video of this that you can click on and then. I will appear. Okay, cool. Yeah. Wow. So, well, I think you covered a few things that awesome. people want to know. I mean, that's uh, the more that people get to, to know right. what goes behind these things you do, I yeah. think it's better. It just I, gives that's, it more that's a great point. I think, I think one of the biggest things and what I'll end on is, you know, for me, a lot of people, when they first see my photographs, they just think, oh, this must be Photoshopped. Yeah, right? that's the right. that, that's like the number one thing. Right. And then when they find out, like, oh, we shot this on film, and it's not photoshopped, and it's real, people are like, what? Yeah. And you know, it's like even like the you know the girl flying the, the plane flying over, mm -hmm. or even and I don't know how you would do this, but people think that the Rolls Royce is photoshopped. Really? Like the, the fire, yeah. Because um, they can't believe you. Because they blow up a Rolls Royce. Right. Yeah. Um, and so you know, for me, that's part of why I originally started doing video behind the scenes was because we would show people a photo and they'd be like, "That's nah, fake." Yeah. And then we we're like, "No, we did it for real." And they're like, "Eh," but it's a lot harder to fake the behind the scenes video. Yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. So, um, well, thank you all for checking this out. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to see my Instagram, it's at the Tyler Shields, tylershields.com. And I would like to thank Imitate Modern for putting this entire thing together. And check out the Imitate Modern booth with Scope. And check out imitatemodern.com. And also check out Imitate Modern on Instagram. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.